What is the meaning of Sabbath in your life? I think it is a matter of a relationship with God, not about carrying a burden or being in bondage. It is much like a relationship between people where there are certain rules and expectations, as in parent-child relationships, a promise or understanding made between individuals. I wanted to work as a man of God and to be a doctor for that purpose. Therefore, it was meaningless to become a doctor if I broke my relationship with God. Each step of the journey, I focused on that relationship first, rather than becoming a doctor. It is not easy to live as a member of a minority religious group in Korea. The Adventists in Korea have faced challenges socially and in education. Asking for special treatment from teachers, professors or employers is difficult and often leads to job loss or abandoning studies. In March 2017, a Seventh-day Adventist man named Chi Man Han enrolled in K-University School of Medicine. This school is considered as one of the top universities with conservative faculty, strict standards, and high authority. It was great. After studying hard for three years in high school, and then more time in preparation for medical school, I was ecstatic to be accepted into K Medical School. Together with my parents and all my family, it was absolute joy. When I received a timetable, realizing that so many exams fell on Saturday, I immediately began to lose confidence in my situation. I questioned whether I could confidently go to my professors and declare my faith by asking for a change from Saturday. When I thought about whether I could fight for this to the end, I had no courage and was very much afraid. Having kept the Sabbath his whole life, Ji Man Han pleaded with each professor to have his exams rescheduled. But the school pointed out the policy for alternative exams was intended for illness or unavoidable circumstances, not religious reasons. If he did not take his exams on Saturday, he would be suspended. They added that if he wanted to become a doctor, he should give up his beliefs. It was such a complicated procedure. To talk to my professors, about solving this issue. I became a nuisance as I kept making them uncomfortable. And I sensed my classmates were talking behind my back about my requests. In agony over his dilemma, Chi Man Han sought advice from others who had graduated from medical school while keeping the Sabbath. Hello, Dr. Kang. I am about to be suspended from school because of Sabbath keeping. What should I do? Jiman, don't worry too much. Let's pray together and find a solution. <laughs> Professor, I cannot take my exams on Saturdays. I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Uh, I also experienced getting suspended from medical school, then expelled, and finally readmitted to school 
all because I couldn't take my exams on Saturdays. So when I heard that Mr. Han faced a similar challenge, I deeply sympathized with him and wanted to help him. Dr. Ki Hoon Kang works to help Adventist students who face exam challenges in medical schools. He submits petitions to state agencies while collecting data in hopes of helping their cases. All the while, many Adventist young people attending other medical schools across the country quietly keep their faith by requesting to keep the Sabbath in their respective schools. How can you accuse the school? I'm sorry, sir. I have continually requested help from my professors to allow me to keep the Sabbath. Some understood my situation and showed pity and concern, while others got angry at me. When I petitioned for help through the system, I got called to the school president. You've acted too rashly, he would say. Since there was no formal school protection, some students were given a B plus as their highest score. Some were severely scolded. Others experienced harsh criticism for believing in a false religion. But somehow, each was able to find a way to get the help they needed to graduate from medical school. Unlike other Adventist students who had miraculously solved a Sabbath exam or class by visiting their professors, K Medical School was different. They told Chiman they could not help him for religious reasons. I didn't have any chance, even though I sought help from my professors. I also asked the Human Rights Commission for help, but they were not willing. At that moment, I felt the only thing to do was take legal action and bring it to trial. After learning that Chiman Han decided to testify in the Korean courts concerning Saturday exams, Dr. Ki Hoon Kang and the members of the Religious Freedom and Equal Opportunity began helping him. They raised money to hire a human rights attorney. They collected materials from the past 20 years and submitted data from cases overseas. They gathered Adventist graduates from other medical schools who were able to keep the Sabbath, and they submitted a petition to the court asking K University to accept the request of Mr. Han. Upon receiving the petition from Adventist graduates, the court ordered a confirmation of facts from each school. But because many former students had graduated from medical school over 10 years ago, and their professors often used unofficial forms of communication to approve alternative exam days, it was almost impossible to provide confirmation of facts. But surprisingly, one medical school replied by putting together all the exams that Ms. Hyun Jung Cho took more than a decade ago and sent the report back. The school also attached a statement of reason to accept her special request because of the National Human Rights Commission's recommendation to the school to make improvements on this issue. Naturally, I thought no one would reply to this request because so much time had passed. As a student, I even petitioned to the National Human Rights Commission and prayed that professors would not discriminate against other Adventist students because of my actions. So I was deeply touched when someone put together all the exams that I took alone on a different day. God is truly alive, and there are angels to help each and every one of us. And I began to have hope for Chiman's trial. The response of Hyun Jung Cho's university fact-finding inquiry 
confirm the validity of the Adventist graduates' petition. While they awaited the judge's decision, the Religious Freedom and Equal Opportunity Organization called for prayers from Korean Adventists as well as worldwide. The prayer requests were translated into multiple languages, which led to a prayer relay around the globe. On April 18, 2018, the long-awaited judgment was handed down. The result was a loss for Chi Man Han. Well, I thought it was an obvious result. On the other hand, I thought about what step I should take next. Many things were on my mind as I worried about my future. Of course, I was disappointed that we lost. Attorneys and others around me warned the fight was difficult, that we could not win. Many said that an appeal to take alternative Saturday exams could not be processed administratively. And even if we took it to trial, we would lose. Perhaps the only possibility was to pass new laws in the National Assembly. After losing the trial, seemingly his last hope for keeping his religious beliefs, Chi Man Han was on the verge of being expelled from his school. Appealing the decision was his only chance, which seemed impossible to overturn in the higher court. Yes. If I may plead with you one more time, oh, it won't be easy. I, I see. The challenges to appeal escalated. The attorney who defended Chi Man Han in the first trial turned down the case to appeal. Other attorneys also declined, believing the case impossible to win. Because we lost the first trial, that attorney who was in charge declined our offer and suggested we hire an Adventist attorney who was aware of our situation. But no other attorney wanted to take the case, expecting to lose. Dr. Kang, the probability of losing this case is very high. What attorney would want to take on a losing case? Dr. Ki Hoon Kang met me at a cafe where I repeatedly explained to him the high possibility of losing the case. And I declined his offer. But he said to me, Mr. Shin, in the case of a doctor, even if a patient is dying or nearly impossible to treat, it's the doctor's responsibility to try and save the patient at all costs. Likewise, isn't a lawyer's responsibility to do the same for a client, even with little chance of winning? When I heard this, I was moved and decided to accept the case, knowing the odds of winning were against us. When Myung Char Shin decided to take the case, he only had a few days to prepare before the trial. Miraculously, his other scheduled trials were delayed. So he was able to secure some time to prepare for Chi Man Han's trial. He worked day and night preparing, and he prayed earnestly for divine wisdom since it was not possible to win through human wisdom. During the court battle, fervent prayers from churches around Korea were being given for Chi Man Han. Those gathered for the Northern Asia Pacific Division's Mission Congress prayed for him as well. From Australia to USA and Brazil, there was a prayer rally going around the world. In the meantime, multiple pleas and arguments for Chi Man Han continued. Attorney Myung Char Shin provided defense documents claiming the legal basis for the right of Sabbath keeping as well as petitions from Adventist doctors. I remember the day of the second trial. I was so nervous right up to the day, thinking, if we win, 
I don't want to forget how happy I will feel and that I should document it in a journal. I am so nervous. The trial will be over tomorrow. There will be a verdict. All the pains, sweat, toil, and tears of countless people will be answered tomorrow. God will answer. If he chooses not to intervene, all our efforts will crumble like sand. I cling to the word. Ask and it will be given to you. God, please have mercy upon those who are being persecuted because of your word. It is my sincere hope that through my answered prayer, the faith of God's people will grow and strengthen. Though he may not answer, may the prayers lifted unto him not vanish away. The Day of the Final Verdict Result, the plaintiff wins. The Daegu High Court miraculously overturned the first trial and decided in favor of Chi Man Han. When Chi Man heard the news, he gave thanks to the Lord. The Daegu High Court's ruling stated the judges view that the school must prepare an alternative test system to comply with religious observations and Sabbath keeping. It summarized as to why K University's claim was wrong. It also cited all the cases of other Adventist graduates who had faced difficulties. This was the first legal case in South Korea regarding religious observations and Sabbath keeping. Well, we won the second trial. Y yes, we won. So, what can I say? Ah, oh, thank you. I just had to shout for joy because I was so happy. It was as if the word win was popping out of a monitor. It was such a thrill, and I was thinking, Lord, thank you so much. Oh, I was really thankful. The God that I believe in is truly alive. I'm a simple person who often fails to rely on Him because of my lack of faith. What I learned and felt throughout this trial was that He still loves me and He will take care of me to the end. It was such a joyful and happy moment. But the joy didn't last long. The school could not accept the result and appealed the case to the Supreme Court. A battle with no end in sight had begun. If there was no Supreme Court ruling before March, Chiman would have to pay for another year of school. Everyone rallied to pray again in hopes the Supreme Court would decide with Chiman and the result could come before March. Even if the High Court prevailed, the Supreme Court could return the case back to the High Court in a remand, which would mean a retrial at the High Court. And even if we won a second time, the school could appeal again, prolonging the ultimate verdict. We certainly worried that it could be overturned again at the Supreme Court. Maybe God is taking this all the way to the Supreme Court to end it there. And if we go to the Supreme Court and win the case, it means that we can firmly seal the case. But I know that the Supreme Court trial can be a never-ending trial. The only way to end this quickly is if the Supreme Court decides on a discontinuance and dismisses the appeal, recognizing the judgment of the High Court. This will be the best scenario. On January 31, 2019, the Supreme Court decided on a discontinuance and dismissal of the appeal, meaning the Supreme Court would not open the case. Dismissing the appeal and deciding that the High Court's ruling would stand. There was no need for a further hearing. My father first heard the decision. At that time, I was studying in my room and I heard my dad running from the far side of the house, calling my name. He yelled, Jiman! 
The decision has been made. Hurry and check the result. Holding back my excitement, I checked. When I saw court hearing discontinuance, I was so touched and elated. God was truly working His miracles in a big way. It was such a blessing to experience that moment. First of all, this decision has provided a legal basis for all students attending schools from elementary school, middle and high school, to university to request alternative days for Saturday classes or exams. Many Adventist students have faced difficulties in taking exams on the Sabbath. But now, if there are exams or classes on Saturdays, there is a legal basis to resolve the issue. I've been personally pleading with the government regarding this matter and have received many rejections. But I kept records of them. At times, I tearfully question myself, why am I doing this? Will there ever be a time when God will use all these records? Eventually, after 20 years, all the documents and experiences came together to help people like Mr. Han and ultimately led to the victory of the trial. I was able to see all of this was God's divine providence and His plan all along. God had finally answered my prayer from 20 years ago. It just took some years of time.